This is seven national news and in our top story. The UA Vice President, Prime Minister and ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, received the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, Antonio Guterres, and the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East, Commissioner General Pierre Krahenbull. In attendance was Dubai's deputy ruler, His Highness Sheikh Maktoum bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, where the ruler of Dis Dubai discussed with his guests the conditions of refugees in conflict areas around the world, and in particular the conditions of Palestinian, Syrian and Iraqi refugees. The meeting discussed the procedures in place for delivering humanitarian aid, especially medical and food supplies, and means of overcoming obstacles. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed praised the leading international humanitarian role of many UN bodies, especially at the UNRWA, which has taken the role of delivering aid to refugees and displaced people, despite enormous logistics challenges. The ruler of Dubai asserted the full support of the UAE to the UN and also other international entities in their mission to help refugees globally. The UN commissioners noted that the UAE's rapid response during the conflict in the Gaza Strip, where a fully equipped field hospital, along with qualified doctors and nurses, were quickly deployed. A 24-plane airlift carrying aid supplies were delivered in 36 hours. The UAE has also donated over 360 million US dollars and set up a field hospital to Syrian refugees in Jordan. The UN delegation also praised the role of the UA Red Crescent, headed by the Abu Dhabi ruler's representative in the Western region, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Zayed Al Nahyan, and Dubai's international humanitarian city, chaired by Princess Haya Bint Al Hussein. The sixth delegation of the Emirates Red Crescent, chaired by Humaid Rashid Al Shamsi, the Deputy Secretary General for International Assistance, has distributed 600 relief aid parcels to inhabitants of Sheikh Zayed city, north of the Gaza Strip. Al Shamsi said the relief aid was distributed to those who live in residential flats, which have seen partial damages due to aggression, noting that the relief aid had been already distributed to those who had undergone full damages. He added that the aid included food parcels, Nap nappies for babies, milk and biscuits with vitamin supplies, as well as mattresses and blankets for kids. The Zayed Giving Initiative has launched a new mobile medical unit to treat children. The free service uses the latest diagnostic and therapeutic technology under the supervision of senior doctors and surgeons from international teaching hospitals. Moza al Oteba, a member of the Zayed Giving Initiative, says that the initiative looks to specifically help children and those in need. Dr. Adel al Shamri, the CEO of the Zayed Giving Initiative, says that the med medical mobile unit for children will focus on four basic programs curative, surgical, preventative, and training, adding that the campaign aims to provide better services to poor children worldwide. The Brand Dubai team have announced the launch of a series of initiatives in order to highlight innovative components of the Dubai development experience. A number of initiatives and projects are set to be rolled out across Dubai and will be conducted in cooperation with an elite group of talented youth. According to news agency WAM, the team has revealed that the initiatives and projects will coincide with events set to be hosted by the Emirate, noting that the brand Dubai will focus on innovation and non-traditional ideas. The initiatives combine innovation, contemporary originality, and promote community awareness about creative abilities produced by the unique nature of the city with a wide range of cultures. It also offers one of the best modes of coexistence among people, irrespective of cultural backgrounds. 
Munir Ghanem al Mari, the Director General of the Dubai Government Media Office, was quoted as saying that the idea was derived from the vision of the UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. The Dubai police are warning the community against accessing emails from abroad as they may be more vulnerable to hackers. The news comes as the Cyber Investigation Department, which is a part of the CID, received a number of complaints. Major General Khalil Ibrahim Al Mansouri, the assistant to the Dubai Police Chief for Criminal Investigation Affairs, was quoted as saying that in most cases, hackers access email accounts and con the victim's friends into parting with money. He added that they usually target those who appear to be closest to the victim, as they are more likely to help if their loved one is in trouble. He said that many people traveling, uh, traveling abroad access their emails from internet cafes and public computers, which makes it easy for cyber criminals to steal passwords. And over in Sharjah, police have launched a month-long campaign to warn motorists against riding unlicensed and illegal motorbikes. According to a local daily, brochures are to be handed out to motorcyclists, which will boast safety tips, the risks of riding a vehicle without a license, as well as failing to observe traffic laws and riding over the speed limit on roads. Police also said that from mid-October, they will start impounding bikes that violate traffic rules. The number of inmates taking up vocational training schemes is on the rise, as according to the Abu Dhabi Police Punitive and Correctional Institutions. This will help reintegrate prisoners into society when they are released. Authorities say that there are 1,302 prisoners who have signed up for the labour market programme so far this year, as compared to 1,277 last year. Computer and English courses are in high demand, and new courses have also been introduced, including chemistry and electronics, for those interested in getting employment in oil companies or the Electricity Authority. Police are now renewing their contract with the higher colleges of technology to teach practical and professional skills. The programme has four terms and requires 25 hours of attendance a week. Those who pass their course receive a conduct certificate that will enable them to work in the government sector. And finally, looking to other news now, the Shah Jah Art Museum has brought India and Pakistan's rich art and culture together at a unique exhibition that's running until the 20th of November. His Excellency Sheikh Sultan bin Ahmed Al Kazmi, the chairman of the Sharjah Media Centre and Sharjah Media Corporation, inaugurated the event. He toured the exhibit aptly titled Trajectories, 19th to 21st century printmaking in India and Pakistan. One of the guest co-curators at the event was artist, academic, art critic and curator based in Kolkata, India, Dr. Paula Sengupta, who said that this is a rare opportunity that allows them to explore and showcase their similarities and differences. Dubai-based independent curator from Karachi in Pakistan, Camilla Chowdhury says that this is a unique exhibition that documents the artistic movement of their nations over the years and explores their culture, arts, history and sentiments. 157 rare prints from 50 artists will be on display at the Sharjah Museum for over two months. The concept of the exhibition was given to me by uh, the head of the Sharjah Museum's department, Manal Ataya, and the idea, I think, originated from uh, Her Excellency Sheikh Ahur herself. She's a printmaker herself and she wanted to do a, a show that explored printmaking in Pakistan and India. Now, the fact that it is exploring printmaking in Pakistan and India is what makes this show very original and very different. Uh, shows which are showcasing the works in any medium, uh, or from both those, from India and Pakistan, are very rare. Um, and so, ex looking at this exhibition, it, what makes it different is that that it is doing for the both the countries and also more than j the both countries, sh taking a historical look at the shared history, the shared legacy, the cultural uh, shared legacy, 
and um, and and then also looking at how that has evolved over time. That I'm actually physically seeing it coming together. Uh, the f when I walked through it myself the day I arrived, I I, th I found myself thinking that this is extremely unique in the sense that I've never seen an exhibition that is that has so many points of uh, diversity, but so many points of commonality as well.